the Music Theory Lady. Hi guys, welcome back to the Music Theory Lady. Today we're talking about identifying meters and beaming. Beaming is a pretty tricky subject. Um, a lot of my students struggle with it, so I'm hoping I can explain it pretty clearly for you here. Um, but if not, always, as always, feel free to leave a comment uh, down below and I'll see if I can help you out. All right, so identifying meters. How can you determine the meter when looking at a passage of music that doesn't have a time signature? Say, for instance, in the middle of a piece of music or if you're looking at an excerpt or something like that. This happens sometimes on the AP Music Theory exam. They expect you to be able to look at music and identify what meter would go best with that piece of music. <clears throat> First, you want to do is you want to look for the beat groupings or beamings of notes. This will show you the number of beats per measure. So if you're seeing three main groupings, it's probably a triple meter. If you're seeing two main groupings, it's probably a duple meter, so on and so forth. Um, <clears throat> then you're going to look at how those beat groupings are divided. Are you seeing lots of divisions of three or multiples of three? Are you seeing lots of divisions or multiples of two? And that would determine whether it's compound or simple. So here's an example. Um, let's look through and see if we can see some clues as to whether or not it's simple or compound and duple, triple, or quadruple. So first we notice there's quite a few dotted notes. Um, dotted notes, remember, is uh, what we use in compound meter to show the, uh, the, the main pulses or the main beats of the measure. Um, so we can see there's some of those here. That's a little bit of a clue that it might be a compound meter, but not just that on its own. Um, you see a group of three eighth notes beamed together. So usually the only time that we see eighth notes beamed together in threes um, is when we're in a compound meter. Um, you see quarter eight patterns right here. That's another clear indication of it being a compound meter, especially one that has an eight on the bottom, because uh, that would be a grouping of three, essentially two eighth notes in that quarter note and then that eighth note. So together they make three eighth notes. Um, let's look at that note in the last measure. It's a dotted quarter tied to an eighth note um, that holds for a total of four eighth notes. So you may ask yourself, well, why not just put a half note? Well, a half note would be great if it was in simple meter, but notice they didn't use a half note. They used a dotted quarter, then tied it to an eighth note. So that's another indication that we're not in simple. So again, so that way you can keep the beat grouping separate. So the answer to this is, it is compound duple, or more specifically, 6-8 time. Here's another example. Um, how many beats or beat groupings do you see? Well, I see, uh, I see three quarter notes here, so that would be a good example of three groupings. Um, I see two beats and one beat. I see two beats with this half note and one beat. Um, so that's kind of three beats, right? So in my head, I'm thinking, okay, it's at least a triple meter. Um, and then how are those beats divided? Well, if I look again at this measure of quarter notes, each one of those quarter notes can be divided equally into two eighth notes. Um, same with this measure and same with this measure. So every time that I'm seeing these three pulses, they can be divided into two. So to me, that means it's going to be a, a simple meter. Um, but we talked about last time, we talked about dotted notes are an indication of compound meter, and we have a dotted note here. But because we don't have a lot of them, and because that dotted note is often paired with an eighth note, that's usually an indication that we're in a simple meter. Um, usually dotted eighth notes in compound meter sort of occur on their own. Like if I go back to that last slide, you can see we've got a dotted quarter and a dotted quarter and a dotted quarter that's sort of appearing on its own. Um, and in this one, it's almost like it needed that eighth note to finish out that second beat. Um, so for this one, I would think that it is simple triple or more specifically three four. All right, here's a third example. Um, this one's kind of tricky because it's showing you basically exactly the same notes that are happening, uh, but if you notice, the rests are a little bit different. In this top one, we have an eighth note and two eighth rests, and then a quarter note and an eighth note. In the bottom one, we have an eighth note, eighth rest, quarter rest, and then eighth rest, eighth note. So uh, what is different about them? Obviously, their rests are a little bit different. Their groupings at the end of the notes are a little bit different as well. Um, can you tell what the meters are of each one? Because it's not the same meter, even though they're making the same sounds. So the answer here is um, this top one, the way that they've split this quarter rest into an eighth rest and then a quarter rest, um, we see a grouping of three eighth notes here and a grouping of three eighth notes here. Again, here's a group of three 
and a group of three. Um, this dotted quarter note that's tied, remember we talked about that first example, they chose to have a dotted quarter tied to an eighth as opposed to a half note. That's another indication of it being a compound meter. So it's my belief that the top one is compound duple and that the second one or B is in simple triple. All right, so you try it. I'm gonna give you about mm, 20 seconds here, see if you can figure this one out and I'll come back to you. Okay, what'd you think? What is the meter? Um, so I saw four main groupings, one, two, three, four. Again here, one, two, and yes, these two are technically sort of put together. Um, I don't know why, but in simple meter sometimes across, a simple quadruple meter across two, like the first two beats or the last two beats, you can have a little bit of combining, um, but normally like in a triple meter or in a, a compound meter, you want ever, all those beats to be divided, um, but you can have it happen in simple quadruple. So I would say this is probably four, two, uh, a simple quadruple. So we've got four half notes per measure. Why is it not eight four? Why couldn't it be eight uh, quarter notes instead? Um, and it's, it's a little convoluted. I, I guess you could write something in eight four, but for our purposes, we're studying music that's written in duple, triple, or quadruple, and eight wouldn't really factor into being a quadruple meter. Um, we also talked about um, last time in meters that simple meters have two, three, and four on top, um, and compound meters have six, nine, and 12 on top. And so those are really the only ones that we're dealing with right now. Eventually we'll get into asymmetrical meters that have five and seven on top and feel a little wonky and fun. Um, but we really don't deal with meters that have eight on top. Okay, now we're gonna talk about beaming. This is where we get a little technical and a little crazy. Um, beaming is the process of reorganizing note durations so that they represent their beat groupings. Um, so it's, it's all about kind of simplifying the measure sometimes, or sometimes breaking things apart a little bit so that you can put beat groupings with like beat groupings. Um, so uh, beam groups of eighth notes and smaller values according to the beats in the measure. So for instance, in this first example, um, it's supposed to be in three, four, because it's in three, four, you should see three groupings. And we do, there's one grouping here of three eighth notes, one grouping here of two sixteenths and an eighth, and one grouping here of an eighth note. But those groupings aren't equal, and your beats should all be equal. Um, and I, not to mention the fact that the time signature tells me there should be three quarter note beats. And in this first grouping, I have a beat and a half worth. In this last grouping, I only have half a beat. So we have to figure out how to rewrite this so that it is three groupings that are equal that are only worth one beat. And that's where this right answer comes from. We've got two eighth notes here, that's one beat. They're now grouped together in one group. We have that eighth and two sixteenths, and then we have two eighths here. The big thing I want you to get out of this is not only are we trying to figure out how to make it look more like the time signature that it's supposed to be, but that these two examples still make the same sounds. That wrong example in three, four would sound like this. Ta, 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 ta. The right example would sound like this, ta, 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 ta. It's exactly the same sound. So we're not taking these notes and reorganizing them in terms of moving a quarter note there and then I think an eighth note would go better there and that kind of thing. We're still keeping those beats or those sounds in order. We're just trying to figure out how to group them together better to make those very clear beat groupings. In compound meter, it's important to show the basic pulse structure of the measure and the division of three as clearly as possible. So in this first example in 9-8, I should have three, because 9-8 is a triple meter. I should have three main groupings. Again, I do have three main groupings, but those three main groupings don't each have three eighth notes in them, as is told to us in the time signature. So we have to figure out a way to rewrite that so there's only three eighth notes worth in each grouping. And in this better one, you can see they have a dotted quarter which was just fine from the previous example then we have three eighth notes grouped together we've lopped off that that extra eighth note and sort of thrown it into that third grouping with that quarter note 
Um, the next one in 6-4, this is confusing because 6-4 is a duple meter, so I should have a very, very clear pulse one and a very clear pulse two, um, but in here it almost looks like three pulses, two quarter notes, a half rest, and two quarter notes. Um, so we have to break apart that half rest so that I have very clear grouping one that's equal in length to grouping two. So we've broken it up here into two quarter rests. Now I have three quarter notes or rests that kind of go together, and then three quarter notes or rests that go together on the other side. Okay, the last one, uh, 616. Again, this is a duple meter, but it looks like a triple meter because I have three eighth note pulses. Um, so we need to break apart that center eighth note pulse. Uh, so we're going to do that with a tie. Put that eighth note, break apart that middle eighth note into two sixteenths, tie them together. So again, they still make the same sound and then leave that eighth note at the end. So again, uh, 616, that very first example, the confusing one, would sound like this, ta, ta, ta. The better example would sound like this, ta, ta, ta. So it's exactly the same amount of, uh, amount of space that each sound takes up. It's just a matter of splitting things or combining things on the page to make them look more like the time signature they're supposed to be. Uh, use flags for eighth or shorter value notes that are not grouped within a beat. So I'm using the example from the previous slide. Um, in this first one, you can see uh, we have flagged this eighth note. We had to split it off from these grouping of eighth notes so that we can show that it belongs to a different grouping. If we had grouped it or beamed it um, with those three eighth notes, it now looks like they're all grouped together. So if you need to show an eighth note or a shorter note value a part of a different group and it can't be beamed to anything, then you need to go ahead and add the flag. So more examples of correct beaming here. This is supposed to be in 3-4. We have a half rest and a quarter note. Remember I told you it's really only allowed to combine across beats in a simple quadruple meter. So since it's a simple triple, we need to divide out each pulse. So the right way to do this is to do two quarter rests and then a quarter note. So now I wanna give you a chance to try it. Here's a wrong example. Using a bit of staff paper, can you figure out what the right example would be? I'll give you about 20 seconds and then I'll come back. Did you get it? Here's the answer. So we've taken these eighth notes and beamed them together because we're in 4-4 four, four and we should have four quarter note groupings. So that kind of groups them together. Then I have a quarter note on its own. Doesn't need to be paired with anything because it's already a grouping on its own. Two eighth notes beamed together again. Then we have this quarter note. Remember, we're not gonna turn that into a half note just because it's two beats, because it's going across the bar line. And it's going across the bar line because we can only have four beats in a measure. If you try to turn that quarter note into a half note, you're trying to shove five beats into a four beat measure, and that's just not possible. And then near the end, rather than having an eighth rest and a quarter note and a quarter note and an eighth note, that's kind of all, uh, it's difficult sometimes to read and know exactly where you are in the beat, we've now split that quarter note and quarter note up to where you can see this eighth rest goes with this eighth note. That's why we have the flag here. So those two sort of belong to each other. Then this is the third beat and then the fourth beat on its own. But again, notice because of the way that we've added the ties, it's going to make the same sound. Um, notice also that when we add ties to notes like this, that tie is gonna touch every single note head that it's tying together. It's not like a slur that's just a big overarching thing over all the notes. A tie should touch every single note head that you're tying it to. All right, here's another one. You try it. I'll give you 20 seconds. All right, did you get it? 
So here's the right answer. It was supposed to be in 6-8, so you should have two main groupings or a duple pulse. But in the original answer, they have three main groupings. So you have to find a way to kind of split up those eighth notes and turn them into two main groupings. So we now have one grouping of three eighth notes and a second grouping of three eighth notes. Then we have a quarter note and we have this rest. We've split that quarter rest into two eighth rests so we can see that. And I've seen some examples that will even split these eighth notes into singular eighth notes so that you can see that they're not, um, they're sort of still missing somebody off to the side. It kind of is an indication that you're missing part of that pulse, but I think this is okay too. All right, more examples of incorrect and correct beaming. Here's wrong. I wanted you to see this. So before now, we've really been mostly splitting things up to make it better. This is an example of simplifying it. So right now we have a quarter note tied to an eighth note and then an eighth note tied to a quarter note. Uh, remember, six eighths a duple meter, so we need two main pulses. And in this meter, we needed them to each be three eighth notes worth. This right here, this quarter note tied to an eighth note, is gonna make the sound of three eighth notes worth. Um, and since they're all a part of the same pulse, why not just show them as one pulse? So we can write that instead with a dotted quarter note and then another dotted quarter note. So this is really just a matter of making it easier to read or making it simplified as opposed to splitting things down to try and make it easier to read. And again, notice the same sound is happening in both. And that's it for today, you guys. I know it's a tricky subject. I hope you were able to understand. If not, leave me a message in the comments and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.